Hey, Sean here from 3M. Thanks for joining me. Today's topic is automotive foams, which ones to use and how to use them. First, let's make sure we're using the proper PPE. Secondly, keep in mind these videos are made for a professional setting such as a collision repair shop. If you want to learn more about our safety and warranty information, I've included a link in the description below. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about these different foams. Now we have three foams here. Two of them are expandable. One is non-expandable, and I'll get to that later. But let's talk about these individually. So this is a flexible foam. This is a urethane foam. It's expandable, and it's really designed to mitigate noise or possibly even airflow through the vehicle. This foam is very spongy, which is what, and, and very dense, by the way, which is what allows it to absorb noise. Now, typical areas you may see this in on a vehicle, sometimes behind some panels, like perhaps on a door skin to an intrusion beam. You may find it up in a sail panel when you replace a quarter panel sometimes down in that quarter panel dog leg area, but it could be really anywhere on a vehicle. Uh, so when we're using this foam, there are special techniques and special things we need to know in order to use it properly. And again, we'll talk about that more later. Now this second foam is our 8458. It's a rigid pillar foam. So this is, as the, the, the name says, it's rigid. So if you look at it and, and actually push on it, you'll see that it doesn't rebound like a flexible foam does. It will actually crush. Um, and it's very specifically designed to stop panels from moving, fluttering, flexing, etc., cetera, um, which could actually cause the panels to eventually crack. So there, it's a completely different foam than the flexible foam. So you have to, again, know where to use this foam. Now, when we talk about where do we use the foams, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is look at the OEM service information. Now they're not always gonna tell you which foams to use and where, but sometimes they may. As a matter of fact, this bulletin here um, talks about, first of all, removing the foam from the vehicle before you get started replacing. And then this one here from Nissan actually tells you by part number to use the 8463 flexible foam. So that's the first place you wanna start when trying to determine which foam to use for a specific application. Now, beyond that, if you don't have that OEM information, you're gonna really use the characteristics of the foam to decide which product you're gonna use. So, in other words, we're gonna look at this foam, the foam we remove from the vehicle, is it flexible? Does it rebound when you push on it? That's typically to mitigate noise. We're gonna use a flexible foam. On the other hand, if you push on it and it crushes like the rigid foam, that's the case where you're gonna use that rigid pillar foam. So it's not always cut and dried and spelled out for you. Sometimes you're gonna to have to use some common sense and determine which foam you're gonna use. Now, the one I haven't mentioned yet is the NVH material. So this material here does not expand. Um, a lot of people don't uh, really pay a lot of attention to this foam, but it's a really critical foam in this system here because it can be used to reattach existing foam. So for example, if I, if I removed foam from a cavity, if I could save that shape, sometimes they're very unique shapes and hard to duplicate. If I can remove that and save it, I can actually bond it back in with this material here. But this material can also be used in some cases as a standalone foam, where you can put it behind panels or between, uh, for example, again, door skin to the reinforcement beam, or perhaps the roof bows to the roof skin. So it's a very versatile foam, and we'll talk more about that as we go through these individually. So stay tuned. We're gonna talk about all of these foams individually in detail, and we're gonna show you how they're gonna be used in future videos. Hey, as always, thanks for joining me for this video today. Please comment below, share, and hit that subscribe button. Also, please check out our 3M Collision Repair Academy. There are links in the description below. See you next time.